So let's talk about the two forms of love in particular. There's two forms of love. So I'll draw some uh, top of lines down there and I'll, I'll discuss the two forms of love side by side so we can see it. The first form of love is natural love. What I mean by natural love, this is the love that comes from inside of yourself that you give to others. Follow me? The love that comes from inside of your soul that you give and will project to others, that you actually act upon within yourself towards others. The other form of love is the divine love. Now that love doesn't come from inside your soul. That love comes from inside God's soul. Can you see the difference? Yes. One love comes from inside of your soul. God gave you it as a gift right from the moment of your creation before you even were aware of it and you have the ability to develop it. Does that make sense? The other form of love comes directly from God's soul and it can enter your soul. But it does not come from your soul. You can't, in fact, give it to another person. Only God can give it because it comes from God's soul. Does that make sense? Like only you can give your love because it comes from your soul. Does that make sense? Yeah. Follow me? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Let's look at the two different forms of love and what defines it. The natural love is very much defined by growth in intellect. Now when I say intellect, spirits who are on this natural love path, as I call it, are very, very focused on developing themselves intellectually to understand love. But when you think about it, there's a little problem with that. Can you intellectually understand love? Well, obviously you can to a degree, can't you? Like you can say, well, you can say what love would do, couldn't you, intellectually? So you know love wouldn't murder, would it? Would love murder? No. Would love harm another person purposely? No. So you can intellectually say all of these things, right? But what if you feel like harming another person inside of you? So you know love wouldn't do it here, but you still feel like it here. Does that make sense? Yes. And often we feel like that, don't we? Like when we get into a bit of a rage or something like that, we know we shouldn't do something here, but here is saying, yeah, 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 go for it, go for it, right? <laughs> All right. So that's what I mean by it's very, very hard to intellectually develop in love because what's happening often is there's this a uh, separation between how I feel and what I think, what I know to be right. Does that make sense? And this is why many uh, Christian faiths find it very difficult, right? Because there's a long list of you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not do this, you must not do that, right? And there's a list of things you must not do, and there's a list of things too that you need to do, right? That you have there. So then imagine you've got this list in front of you. But in here, you feel like doing some of the things that are on the list. Right? Now that sets up a little problem, doesn't it? Of guilt and shame. Right? So it sets up a lot of conflict within the soul. Right? So usually souls that are on the natural love path are often in this deep, in deep conflict with themselves. Because on one hand they feel like doing something, but on the other hand they know they shouldn't. When you develop on the divine love path, you become more, or in fact, you become totally emotionally focused. Emotionally what? I didn't understand the last part. You become emotionally focused. Yep. In other words, you develop by developing your emotions. In other words, you notice when you've got this feeling inside of you that says, oh yeah, yeah, go and hurt him, you know, he, he deserves it because he did this to me and he did that to me, and, right? 
he deserved it, so you've got this emotion with him, and you notice this emotion with him, and you want to actually get rid of that emotion from inside of you. Does that make sense? So rather than using your intellect to force or suppress the emotion, what you're doing is the opposite. You're actually using your intellect to actually grab the emotion and experience the emotion and release it from you so you no longer feel it anymore. Does that make sense? A totally different way of developing. Yeah. So, on one hand, I'm intellectually developing. I'm trying to force myself to progress emotionally. On the other hand, I'm emotionally developing and that changes everything, intellectually and everything, around me automatically. When you're processing on the natural love path too, you become very adult-like. Huh? Like, uh, I suppose you could say like most people you see in university. <laughs> or most people that you feel in your day-to-day -day interactions. They're very adult-like. In fact, aren't you taught you should be an adult? You know, you've got to be responsible, you've got to be this, you've got to be that, you've got to be an adult. This is what you're taught, right, from, you know, Little, isn't it? On this side, you become child-like. Now, not childlike in that you're irresponsible, because that is an emotional baggage or emotional injury. But childlike in the sense that every way you experience your emotions is as you have them. You cannot reach a state of bliss emotionally without feeling every emotion as you feel it. Does that make sense? Right? So, initially when you're feeling every emotion as you feel them, the first emotions that come up generally are the ones that are really yucky. You know? Often the first one to come up is rage and anger. You know, that all cuts up. You feel like punching someone out. And, you know, like, when all of those are left you, then the sadness wiggles its way up, right? And you find you cry for a fair few months, perhaps, or might even be years, depends how much is in there, right? And then other emotions wriggle their way up, like unworthiness, and all these other emotions wriggle their way up. And eventually you experience those. But after all of that, those yucky style emotions are all gone, what are you going to experience? Isn't it going to be bliss, emotional bliss? The only emotions you'll have are the ones that are happy and joyous and good. Does that make sense? So on this part, the problem on this part is that we're often trying to intellectually filter an emotion. In other words, an emotion starts wriggling its way up, right? And, and it gets to about here, which is sort of like your sadness centre, if you like, in some ways. It's also the centre of the heart, but the heart chakra, but a lot of sadness gets caught across here, right? Well, a lot of people have heart attacks or those kind of emotions are all caused through here. So the sadness gets up here and I start feeling the sadness almost getting to here, right? And what do I do with it? <laughs> Gotta go to a meditate, you know, go to lay down and have a meditation and what tune it all back down again and let it all suppress, right? That's often what we do, isn't it? Alright. It would be better if that was no longer in you. But it's not going to get out of you if you keep shoving it down, right? It's not going to get out that way. Now, on this path, we try to shove it down and get a bit further along and shove it down and get a bit further along and a little bit dribbles out here and a little bit dribbles out there. And, you know, it's like almost like a pressure cooker. You know what it's like with a pressure cooker? You, you chuck it on the stove and it starts steaming and it only lets out the steam when it's got too much pressure. Is that the way you want to process your emotions? No, you want to be able to let out all your emotions without pressure, without, without their being stressed, right? And to do that, you need to become childlike. You think about when you take your child uh, to, into a candy store, and they're two years old, right? And you say, and you say to them, oh, little Johnny, you know, you can't have your candy. And he says, no worries, mum. Is that what happens? <laughs> uh, what does he do? Scream and yell and shout, right? And he doesn't care who's around, what's going on, so he's going to scream and yell and shout, right? Because he ain't getting what he wants. Right. Now, when you're in a childlike state, you experience your emotions in that purity, 
The key is to release the emotions that are negative so that you don't have any. Does that make sense? Yes. Now you can do that. But a lot of people on earth believe they can't. By the way, when you get to the spirit world, you will have to do it if you want to progress. And I mean have to. When I say have to, I mean you have to if you want to progress. You can stay stagnant in the first sphere if you want when you arrive in the spirit world because it's just a choice, right? It's a free will choice. But you will stay there until you want to deal with your emotions. Of course there is, right? Because you think about it from a murderer point of view, I got all this rage inside, and all this rage comes up, and what do I want to do? Get out a machine gun and shoot, right? That rage, obviously, as soon as I do that, I'm harming myself even further and harming everyone around. So there are appropriate ways <laughs> to deal with emotion. Yep. And interestingly, the spirits on this path, always, when I talk to them, they always say that I am God. The spirits on this path always say, I am God's child. Very key difference between the two paths. Almost all spiritual literature that's around on earth today suggests to you that you are God. And all, almost all the majority of the spirits in the spirit world are actually on the natural love path. And that's why most of the spiritual literature on earth suggests you are God. On this path, you learn actually that you're good, God's child. You're a child of God. And therefore, we are all brothers and sisters. We are all one in the sense that we are all God's child. And uh, we can be at one with God too, which we'll mention in a minute. You can see that this is starting to look very much like what Jesus said. Can you see that? This is starting to look very much like what other philosophers say. Can you see that? Alright. Is there any questions about the two parts? This is developing your love that's from within you and you can do that without God. This is developing in God's love that gets within you and you need to do that with God. Does that make sense? That's basically the two parts. Almost every form of religion on earth and almost every form of religion in the spirit world is developing on that natural love path. Isn't it a combination, or is that what you're saying? Can it be a combination, or does it have to be one or the other? When you develop in divine love, you automatically develop in natural love as well. So uh, the divine love path incorporates all the principles of natural love. So you can have both. But the natural love path does not incorporate the principles of divine love. So this is where most spirits have a problem in terms of their progress, in that they're progressing this way, using their intellect really, uh, they still have to do emotional work, but they become more and more adult-like, more believing that they're God. In fact, I've talked to spirits in the sixth fear, and they believe they're God. And they feel they don't have any more desires, and they feel they don't have free will anymore. Right? They actually say that they don't have free will anymore. And they actually live off of the projected emotions of other people. That's how they survive. 